All right, I got something today. I wanna put some first shots down range. Originally, I wasn't going to uh, shoot this gun. I actually found a deal. Uh, is actually my cousin. He works at a gun shop. And uh, I got this used, and it's actually never been shot. You can look. There's not one powder burn, smudge. There's not one scratch on it. But uh, originally, I wanted the uh, Smith & Wesson 686. But when I saw this gun, man, it was just... Something about a revolver, especially a 357. But uh, it's a 2020, uh, but back in 2020, Colt redid and put out the Python. It's probably one of the most iconic guns there is. But uh, just this gun, man, just the, the smoothness of it. It's just amazing. But it's definitely unloaded. But uh, the double action, Let's see if I can get it. Huh. There's no stacking or anything, man. It's just, it's really nice. It's a lot better than any of my other revolvers. But uh, I think it does have a, probably close to a five pound pull on single action. But the one thing that people were complaining about these guns was, this uh, front sight, you have a little, little. I think it's a little T wrench or Allen key that you're supposed to, you got to loosen it up before you can adjust the sights. So uh, people, when they shoot it, it will start loosening up and their sights will be all over the place. But uh, I actually unscrewed it and put some Loctite in it. So that should have solved that problem. But it has this, uh, you can take these sights out and replace them for a fiber optic, night sight or whatever you want. But I kind of like this one, and I like the original grips. These grips, man, are just beautiful. But uh, you can tell the craftsmanship, man. Uh, and I don't know if any of you that know, uh, the company CZ owns Colt now. And we all know CZ makes really good guns. But I don't know how much CZ had to do with them redoing this gun. But I don't know if you can see this. But anyway, I've never fired it. And I set up some targets down there. Let me get the. These grips, man, they're just beautiful. It probably won't, you know, reduce any of the recoil. I know how wooden grips usually, they'll freaking vibrate your hand with recoil. But uh, a lot of people put the Hogue rubber grips, but I just want to keep these, man. I love that little medallion right there. And, uh, it's just a beautiful, iconic gun. See, I mean, it's this, this double action trigger. It's just so smooth. I mean, you, it's just the same. It feels the same all the way through. Look at that. See right there. It doesn't change. It's just goes right through. And then when you single action, man, it's just. No take up play or mush or anything. But uh, that is a sexy gun. Like I was saying, I set up a bunch of uh, targets. Some of those I've already shot some, but I got some open diamonds on them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how it's sighted in. I might start out at seven yards and work my way back. Uh, show you guys what I'm shooting today. I got some full power 357 loads right here. And I got some uh, some MagTech. This is a 38 Special. So what I might do, look at the price on that. Man, it's expensive. I got this a while back, you can probably tell. I think they came down to about $24 for a box of 38 Special. And these, on the other hand, these are still running around $50. These are about a dollar a round. Freaking ridiculous. But I'll probably start out with the 38 Special and uh shoot a group with it and then i'll shoot a group with the uh 357. all right i'm gonna shoot the target on the uh the far left the silhouette and uh i got the mag tech these are 38 special and i'm gonna see where it groups seven yards 
and I'm gonna go double action. Yeah, I did flinch a little bit on the last one, but uh, see how they eject. Not bad. I'm going to have to pick those up later, but hold on. All right, I think I pulled one, but I'd say the sights are pretty dead on. One, two, three, four, five, six. So... Definitely not bad. I'll be able to tell better once I get back a little further. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up uh, six 357s and uh, do seven yards and see how they're grouping with the 357. All right. I got the full load 357. See how they group. Double action. I think that's all right. Yeah, man, that right here, those wood grips, man, that right there, it bites pretty good. I wouldn't want to shoot those all day long, that's for sure. But uh, looks like I did the same thing. I, I flinched on the very last one, but the first one, I guess I wasn't expecting the recoil. The first one was dead center right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So kind of similar to that group, but uh, that's not bad at all. What I might do is uh, I might shoot some steel. I want you guys to see how these uh, those 357s, they knock this steel down, man. It's pretty, pretty powerful. But uh, what I'll do is I'll shoot six with the 38 Special, and then I'll shoot six with the 357. One thing I am noticing, putting these uh, rounds in here, after shooting it a couple times, you gotta kinda push hard, they don't really fall down. So it's like the cylinder's kinda tight. But uh, we'll see how they are when I try to eject them. But that's one thing I've noticed. And uh, like I said, man, when I got this gun, it's never been shot. And I wasn't, I actually was just gonna put it in my safe and see if it would appreciate. But, uh, Buddy of mine kind of talked me out of it. He said, why do you want to leave it in your safe? Never enjoy it. And then when you die, your kids will probably sell it for half the money you paid for it. And I was like, you know, that's a good point. So anyway, 38 special. This 10 yards right here. I'll do double action again. on the last one see if they come out well they popped out real good all right yeah i missed the last one but uh i'm gonna try the 357 and uh, you guys check out the difference in the way it knocks them down you remember when i said the uh, the 38 specials went in kind of tight but it's definitely the ammo because these right here these just fell in real easy, so it's definitely the ammunition. It's that mag tech. I don't know how good an ammo that is. But anyway, these are the Remington UMC. These are the full power loads. And uh, see if I can hit six out of six. I'm going to do double action again.
Man. Jets. Nice. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the silhouette on the left, far left. I came back here to 45 feet, 15 yards, and I wanted to see what types of groups I can get with the 38 Special, and then I'll shoot the 357, and then probably wrap it up. But, all right, 15 yards. I think I might try single action this time. Since I did double action, I'm going to try single action. Yeah, man, I like double action. I feel like I, I jerk more with single action because you got that short pull where double action, you're pulling it smooth all the way back. But still not too bad from 15 yards. There's a couple up there. One, two, three, four. I think five, six. Yeah, five, six right there. So it's like shooting a little high from uh, 15 yards. But I'm gonna try the 357 and uh, do double action on that, on this one right here. All right, 15 yards with the 357 Magnums. What I'm gonna do? I know I'm being a pussy doing this, but uh, I'm putting these gloves on this time. See if it helps to recoil just a little bit. I would just put one glove on, but uh, I've had comments in the past, so why are you just wearing one glove? So. I put both gloves on. The reason I don't leave them on is because you can't work the camera. It's the touch screen. It's, you know, it won't work with the gloves, but anyway, 15 yards. I got the high power 357 Magnum in there, if you can see it. And see if I can get a better grip than I did with the 38 Special. Yeah, I think it's better. I think it'd be more accurate, believe it or not, with double action. A lot of people would think that single action would be more accurate, but when you got a trigger, let me back it up. I actually got to take these gloves off. I should have did that before I picked the camera up. All right. Actually, double action, when you got a trigger like this, man, it's, it's more accurate than single action. Cause there's no stacking or anything. That's the best double action trigger I've ever shot, for real. But uh, here's the group with the 357. Definitely a better group. Look at that. They're all right there, and I have one there and one there. But uh, yeah, that's definitely good. I think what I'm gonna do before I leave is I'm actually gonna set these up again, and I'm gonna see if I can hit a couple from 30 yards if I don't fall down. All right, and these are five inch plates, about the size of my hand. But uh, I'm gonna go back at 30 yards and uh, probably wrap it up. All right, 30 yards and I'm gonna use a 38 Special. And by the way, the gloves do help a lot with the recoil. It's like a whole lot better when you wear gloves. I think the main reason is it's cold out here. If it was warm, I don't think the recoil would be that bad. But uh, anyway, I got six rounds, six shot revolver, and I'm gonna see if I can get, see if I can get at least four, Four or five out of six. We'll see. I'm going to do double action again, too. Seems like that's more accurate. All right. All right.
came out nice. Yeah, four out of six. Not bad. First shots with the Colt Python. That is the most beautiful revolver I think I've ever seen. That's the main reason I had to get it. And like I said, I didn't want to shoot it. It had never been shot. I mean, it didn't have any powder marks, scratches, or anything. I got a really good deal on it. But anyway, I decided to shoot it. And I might get a nice holster for it and let this be my bear gun or something. Which I don't see a whole lot of bears around where I live. But I've heard people have seen a couple. But anyway. Colt Python. Hope you guys enjoyed. Y'all have a good day. Later.